press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Yes, you know that sound. It's time again to be transported when we take you beyond the final frontier and go boldly where no, well, actually quite a few people are going at the moment. Why? Because we are breaking barriers in space every day. Our trusty guide, of course, is John Weltman from the Foundation for Space Development. And today we are talking about India's space program, namely the woman making it happen. John, welcome. Thank you very uh, much. <clears throat> I like the way you nod your head emphatically when I say the woman, but let's talk about India. India. First, we've discussed so much of what is being done on the, the SpaceX front, what NASA is doing, um, the private sector kind of weighing in. But we haven't spoken about India's contribution, and they've reached some major milestones. Absolutely. Look, w the pioneers were what we call or deem the first world countries. Um, but there is the emerging market that are very involved in space. And India is a, a shining example of what countries like India, South Africa, Brazil, China what can, can do, do yeah. what we can do, what we can, can accomplish. Doing the hard science, doing it cheaper, doing it better. Um, I, I'm glad you said doing it better, and, and a little part of that might have to do with the ingenuity um, of women. 25% of their workforce for this Mars orbital program are, in fact, ladies. Absolutely. ISRO, the Indian Space Research uh, Office, is 25% female, which for wow. a country like India is quite an accomplishment. But this specific probe called Mangalyaan, was, has instrumentation, indigenous in Indian instrumentation, which means it was manufactured and designed in India. And many of those instruments were designed, the projects, the programs were managed by women, women scientists. And I it was an that. amazing accomplishment. There they are at the successful Mars insertion. Uh, wh what is the mission doing? Okay. So India decided they wanted to test their interplanetary skills. And so the primary objective of, of Mangalyaan was to get to Mars. Secondary objective was, can we insert into Mars and do some observations for six months? The idea was to last for six months. Um, they successfully did it, seven orbital maneuvers. They did it at a, a fraction of the cost, $74 million. They did it in 18 months. Oh. And they're the first nation ever to succeed on the first attempt. In a Mars. Wow. 40% of all Mars missions fail. Well, that's what I was going to say. See what happens when you don't have the extra bank in reserve where you've got to make your every cent count. Um, and it's worth noting that that was actually less than it cost to make the movie The Martian. Correct. The Martian cost $108 million to make. <laughs> and <laughs> India sent a probe to, the, to Mars for $74 million. And it's still running two years and six days after its expiry date and still taking observation and measurements for us. I love that. So obviously you mentioned a couple of names in that list of emerging markets, South Africa being one of them. How does this inspire you and your team and the people that you connect with here in South Africa? Do you think this is, is going to see South Africa opening a few more doors? Absolutely. We have a thriving uh, satellite industry. Um, SKA is a major accomplishment yeah. for our country, Massive. which will be very significant. But I would like to see us taking on even bigger projects. And that means going out and lobbying to do them. To, to, and they will create employment. The key thing is that $74 million was all spent in India, not in space. It didn't leave, it, yeah. It didn't leave India. And the same thing would happen here. Oh, I mean, we talk, uh, talk about like literally trillions of rands being spent on local energy sources and things like that. This, these are not budgets that are out of reach for the South African economy, especially when we're plugging that money back in to our own economy. I absolutely love it. Oh, man, you've given me goosebumps. Every week, actually, it gives me goosebumps, but inspired by what the so-called third world is doing at the moment, breaking through that final frontier.